Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, so, I've just dropped this into Photoshop just so we can discuss the, the process of, of what, we're, uh, what we're attempting to do in this video. So, as we've established our base brick pattern here, we can notice um, we've got this half brick length here, which is working for us. Okay, so that's sort of half. However, those points that we've added on that last resample node are kind of in the wrong place and we can fix that uh, not that one. Oh yeah that one as well yeah okay so these are in the wrong place and where we need them to be is kind of we need to reference that point distance attribute again and sort of maybe shift them to kind of like here or something isn't it where they need to be and the process we're going to do is we're going to take advantage of again of a wrangle node where we can manipulate point positions at quite a low level and what we want to do is take advantage of a function called print points okay so this what print points will do is it will store all the points that belong to a primitive so let's focus on this top one here primitive six so we can create an array which is just a fancy name for a list of points and it's denoted by these square brackets we can create an array and those point numbers will be stored for each primitive okay and once we have that array we can index those points within it so it'll go via point number so this will be point zero point 57 this will be point number one two etc on this primitive all right also we can go backwards as well. So if we reference point number negative one in our array, it'll give us this point. So therefore, negative two is this point here, which is the point that's giving us the trouble. So that's what we need to fix. So we can reference that directly. And then once we have a reference to that, we can do some processing on it. So what we need to grab, the information that we need is this distance here. So we can grab that point distance attribute from point zero okay so index zero of the array and we need to apply it to this point here negative two okay so what we need to do for negative two we will snap it back to this point here okay and then we will add this value here so we'll get that point distance reference and then shift it along in space so it sits somewhere like this all right and then that will bring us back to having sort of a symmetrical uh, wall pattern uh, okay and again this is completely procedural it'll work no matter what shape or size wall we throw at it it'll constantly be updating and calculating that um so that sounds really complex i guarantee you it's not it's like three lines of code uh so with that let's jump into houdini and make a start on that so i'm going to come back to houdini we're exactly where we left off and you can see those troublesome points there so we are going to put down a wrangle node okay and we'll call this one fix half brick and let's make a start so the first thing we need to do like we did previously we need to focus on the alternates okay so we're not bothered about these ones these ones are kind of working all right for us so primitive one primitive three and primitive five that brick pattern is fine so like we did before we can reference the primitive number and then check against modulo two make sure that equals zero and then we're into that if statement okay so the next thing we need to do is build that array that we talked about so i want to put a note down build the point array and we can store that into a, an array an integer array variable and we'll call it prim points okay and we need to open and close those square brackets to indicate the start of an array all right, and then we can make use of the prim points function. So make sure you select prim points rather than prim point and full, uh, fill in the arguments that it needs. So the geometry is coming in on input zero, so we can reference that. The primitive number that we're interested in, well, that's the current primitive number that we're currently processing, okay? So if it's made its way into this if statement, then we know this is the primitive that we're interested in fixing okay so once we've got this array we can reference that point that needs to be fixed in another integer variable we'll call this fix me seems like a reasonable enough name and then we can reference our print points array 
And if you remember, we sort of identified that it was index negative two, wasn't it? So if we look at primitive six up here, um, it goes up in point number. So 57 will be zero and 66 would be whatever 66 is. Well, negative one is the index. So negative two is the point that we're trying to fix. Okay. All right. So that's given us a reference to this point on these alternating primitives. The next thing we need to do, if you remember, we need to snap this point back to uh, its neighbor. So we can store that neighbor's position in a vector variable called, say, target point, P for a capital P. And we can get that position using the point function. Okay, the point function is super useful, gets a lot of use. And all that is going to do is going to look at a point number that we specify. And it's going to give us the attribute value depending on what attribute we're interested in. So the first argument is the input number, which is zero, because uh, it's coming in on input zero. The attribute we're interested in is its position attribute. Okay. And then the primitive, the, sorry, the point number that we're interested in is negative one. So the last point in that array. So again, we can reference our prim points array and we can specify negative one this time. Close that bracket and end with a semicolon. All right. So we're starting to gather all the ingredients that we need to, to make this fix. The next thing we need to grab is this point distance attribute here. So we need to know what that is. Okay, and we can grab that again. This time we'll use a flow uh, variable, apologies, and we'll give it the name target length. Okay, and we'll use the point expression again, but this time we're referencing that point dist attribute. Okay. And the point that we're interested in, well, it's the first one in the array. So we'll grab print points, zero, close the brackets, end with a semicolon. And we're all good. It's not, it's a bit more than three lines, maybe five or six, okay. <laughs> all right, so we've got all the ingredients we need there to, to fix these points. Now, with all this information, what we can do is we can set the point attribute on that point, okay. So, um, Again, no prizes for guessing what set point attribute does. Okay. And we'll jump into this. So set point attribute takes a couple of arguments and we'll go through them one at a time. So the first one is quite familiar. It's the input index, which in this case is zero. Okay. Next is the string of what attribute we want to set. And in this case, it's the position attribute. Okay. The next argument is, well, what point do you want to fix? What point do you want to set this attribute on? And we've stored that in a variable called fix me. Okay, so we've referenced that point that's in the wrong place. Okay, the next attribute is the value that we want to set. Okay, so the value is, well, first of all, we want to move the point back to here and then move it forward to its correct position. So we can put this little sort of expression so we can reference that target point variable that we created so tgp plus the normal attributes remember that's the direction along the curve so we're pushing or pulling this this point value based on that multiplied by our target length so that point distance attribute okay so that will hopefully put it into the correct place the final argument we need to do is the mode in which we want this set point to operate and in this case we could just type set like that and end with a semicolon all right so if all goes to plan you can see now we've shifted that point into a position and we've managed to get back our nice neat brick pattern okay so i'll just leave that code on screen for you um pretty standard stuff but like i said if you can get this stuff I uh, get confident with using wrangles. It does open up a lot of cool possibilities when procedural modeling. Uh, just one more tip before we move on. If you are um, unsure about what a function's doing or you've forgotten the arguments, which is, you know, totally reasonable. Nobody expects anybody to completely remember these 100%. What you can do is just put your mouse cursor in the function name, press F1 on your keyboard. And it does work. So press F1. There we go. And it'll bring up the help card for it. 
which I use every single day. Um, you know, like I said, you can't be expected to remember the order of all these arguments or, you know, what a function does. Or if you're trying to learn from someone else's file, it's often cool if, you, if there's a function there that you don't recognize, just press F1 over it take you straight to it in the uh, in the help card which is super super useful and here you can see we get an overview of what it does sets a point attribute in a geometry and then it gives us all those arguments that we need to use as well so again that's really useful and something that i'd recommend um, to to make good use of all right so before we move on let's just do a quick check that our brick pattern is working fine so we'll come all the way back up to our brick spacing node we're going to leave the display flag on here so we can see what our points are doing but now if we um, change the value of our brick length we want to make sure that we're maintaining that uh, nice neat brickwork pattern without any bugs or glitches and as you can see it's sort of it's working for us you know we've got the nice half bricks at the end here on both sides and we've got sort of a nice even distribution of, uh, of, of bricks cool all right, so um, if you've never used Wrangle before and you've made it this far, well done, because you know this is not, you know, this is not super basic stuff. Um, so I would recommend reading the uh, the documentation on anything that you're unsure of. And in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to make a start on processing our individual bricks because we've got the brick pattern in place now. Obviously, we need to generate some geometry um, based on that. So. I'll see you in the next video. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe and do all that kind of youtube -y stuff. Apparently, that's, that's good. So I would uh, greatly appreciate that. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.